Okay, hello and welcome. Uh, sorry for the hiatus. Uh, I wasn't feeling too well for a couple of weeks, so uh, I'm back on track now. And uh, today we are going even further down the rabbit hole of the modes. Uh, what we're going to broach is harmony within the mode system. If you get this, you have a strong, firm basis for understanding the more sophisticated major minor key system and finally the blues system. What we're going to go over today is um, uh, something I call the scale of seconds and the scale of thirds, the three types of chord, how to build a triad, how to build a basic chord, um, chord formulas so you understand the actual structure of a chord, and the all-important chord family template, which I'm going to show you how to do this, uh, do this chord family template for the guitar using bar chords. If you're not capable of bar chords, then you'll have a bit of a problem. But if you can play bar chords, then you're set pretty well. All right, and um, then I'm going to explain, if I have time, uh, this mysterious thing of why there are six chords of a key and not seven. Because there are seven steps in a scale upon which you could build a chord, okay? So uh, I'm going to explain why I say, even though there's seven steps upon which you could build a chord, there's actually only six usable chords within a key. Um, all right, so let's get started. First of all, you know, I spoke with you guys about the modes and how uh, you can have the key of C, but in the Greek system, that doesn't mean that the C chord or the C note is the root, meaning the gravity note, the note you come home to, like as in do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, right? I explained to you how you could start on a different degree of the scale and make that a root, and so on and so forth for all seven steps of the scale. So with that in mind, you can understand why there'd be a bias in the mind. If I say the key of C, your mind is going to default or knee-jerk react to, okay, well, C must be the root. And that's the fault of this major minor key system that occurred around the time of Bach, I'd say. Um, that's problematic because there is a difference between a key and a root. And I, I wish academia would get this straight. It's, it's absurd and it's totally confusing. Um, so I, I noticed that um, most of the musicians I work with, if they have a little experience and understanding of the principles in music, it takes them a long time. I literally have to deprogram them from thinking, uh, uh, you know, that the key of C means this, that C is the root. I try to pound this in over and over again. If you have a key, I don't care if it's the key of G, the key of A, the key of B, whatever the case may be, that that key, uh, just because it's named by that letter, doesn't mean that you're rooted to that note or that chord on that first step. All right, so therefore, I came up with a proposal about how to name keys rather than by their letters. And it's a very simple idea. Um, say for example, every key, uh, as you've seen in the circle of fifths, every key has its own separate amount of sharps or flats. In other words, the key of D has two sharps. There's no other key that only has two sharps. All right, the, Each number of sharps or amount is unique to a particular key. Uh, same thing on the flat key side of, uh, of the uh, circle of fifths. The key F has one flat B flat, and there is only one key that has one flat, and that's the key of F. All right, uh, so my point being that there could be a new, name, uh, new way to name keys where you don't have to bias the mind into thinking, oh, this note is the root of the key. We'll take the key of C, for example, Again, uh, the knee-jerk reaction is C must be the root of the key of C. No, 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 no. The Greeks thought it says hundreds of years before the major minor key system. That's not the case. Um, all right, so my proposal is oh, take the key of G. Instead of calling it the key of G, so our mind isn't biased that the G note is rooted, we call it the one-sharp key. And that gives us a neutral array of notes that we don't know yet what the root is, until some music has been created that forces the root into existence, okay? So that's, uh, that's my idea uh, I'd like to throw <laughs> out there in the wild. I'm sure academia will run and, you know, take my ideas and just put them right into their uh, curriculum. No, they won't, unfortunately. But maybe someday someone will discover this stuff and realize, holy crap, they're making huge mistakes in the educational system for music. Until then, 
you're just going to have to listen to me, <laughs> okay? All right, so now uh, I want to talk about what I call the scale of seconds and the scale of thirds. This is yet another thing they do not teach you in music school. Here we have the C scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and uh, you notice that there's a number assigned to each note, which makes sense. C is 1, D is 2, E is 3, so on and so forth. Okay, these numbers are fixed. If, uh, if I go from D to D, I still call D2, all right? Um, now, this, is, this scale of seconds applies to melody lines. You, um, you refer to D as the 2, or the, in the Do, Re, Mi scale, you refer to it as Re. It's fixed there. You call it 2. Now, the scale of thirds applies to harmony and the study of harmony. The scale of thirds needs to be deployed in the musical system because they're screwing up the names of chords and if they went by the scale of thirds they wouldn't be screwing up the names of chords anymore. Alright, but this takes a long-winded thing and probably this is going to be in a few parts because uh, there's a lot to it. Even in this simple Greek mode system there's a lot to get. But the beauty is if you really really get this the other stuff will be easier to understand down the line. Alright, now in the case here, the numbers are fixed. In the case here, the numbers are not fixed. But first, let me go through. Chords are built in thirds, all right? Which means you go one, two, three, one, two, three. Or you can think of it as you have your scale, and if I want to build a C chord, I leapfrog over one note, and then I leapfrog over the next. So I get one, three, five. One, the number one can be substituted with the letter R, meaning root R, three, five. All right, and chords, Actually, before I go any further with the scale of thirds, let me talk for a moment about harmony. Um, another thing they don't teach you in music school is there are two directions of study in harmony, vertical and horizontal. Okay, I like to give the analogy of Chicago. Somewhere in the late 1800s, Chicago burned down, and they had to rebuild the entire city. And uh, they took some care with this rebuilding. They said, look, if we're going to rebuild a thing, let's make it a beautiful city. And they did indeed. Chicago is a lovely city, uh, but it's really, really well known for its beautiful architecture. And um, it's on the lake, right? So if you're driving down what's called Lakeshore Drive, to the left of you, you'll see the skyline of Chicago. Now, as you're driving, you'll see this building, and then you'll see the next building, and then the next building. That is if you think of each building as a chord, you're going from chord to chord to chord. That is the horizontal movement of chords, how they interact with each other in time. And if you know me by now, I'm a total Beatles fanatic, and one thing they were masterful at, even beyond some jazz composers, was the way they move from chord to chord to chord. Um, Penny Lane is just an example of just absolute marvel of that. Uh, another song uh, by Paul McCartney after he left the Beatles but still had the Beatles vibe to it is uh, Maybe I'm Amazed, which I'm thinking of doing a special analysis for that song because it's so incredible. Like the chord movement is just off the charts beautiful. Anyway, so horizontal movement is I have a C chord moving to a G chord moving to an F chord. Why does this work together? Okay, so that's the theory of horizontal movement in harmony. Uh, vertical is not about movement, it's, about, it's not about time, it's about space. And in this case, vertical space. So now we're driving along Lakeshore Drive, and we're moving from building to building horizontally, but then we notice the Sears Tower and go, wow, that's a cool looking building, I'm gonna drive over to that building and check it out. So you go up the elevator to each floor and inspect each floor. The how that building is built layer upon layer is vertical harmony, and when we think of that in terms of chords, Remember I just said that, um, for example, a C chord is built C, E, G. By the way, three notes is the smallest possible compression you can get. You can't have a two-note chord. It's too vague. You need three notes to define a chord, and the definition is that it must be built in thirds, okay? But once you have this basic chord, you can start building more thirds on it, and more thirds on it, and more thirds on it, and you get these really fat jazz style chords from that. And we're going to go into that in a bit. Now, one other thing I said is that these numbers, in this case, are not fixed. In other words, if I want to build a D minor chord, I leapfrog from D to F to A to C. So this one, instead of 
you know, there's an empty space here, but I'm going to have to move the 1 over to here and call this 13579. So this shifts. These numbers shift according to the note you're starting on. The 1 is always the root of the chord, okay? Do we have that? Do we understand that? Great, I'm glad to hear it. All right, now let's talk about, um, really get into the specifics of building triads. Okay, so, uh, we have seven notes in the key of C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then, we, of course, we come back to the octave here at C. So if I want to build a C chord, I go, I leapfrog, and I leapfrog again. I get root, third, fifth, one, three, five. So my first chord of the key of C is C major, all right? My second chord, I'm going to leapfrog, one, three, five, D, F, A. Well, D, F, A yields me a D minor chord. If I start on the third note of the, of the series, but remember, I'm going to call this one because now these numbers are, are movable to the chord you're creating. I get E, G, B. That's an E minor chord. And if I go to the fourth step, I get F, A, C, and that's an F major chord. And then I get G, B, D. That's the fifth step. That's a G major chord. And the G major, very, very important. Um, this is the Mixolydian step in the Greek modes. And this is very, very important to American music especially um, because it's in this step that the blues can be applied, all right? All right, so going on then, uh, we go to the sixth step of the scale, we get A, C, E, and uh, finally B, D, F. Now B, D, F is the black sheep of the family. Uh, I'm, I'll show you why in a second as we go into building triads. But first you must know there are three qualities of chord. In a sense you could say there are only three chords. There's major chords, minor chords, and seventh chords, which stand on their own as a very special and unique type of unit. Yes, the seventh chord is built on a major chord, and I'll get to that, but, um, and it, it does have a major quality, but because of the blues, we're allowed to inject the minor quality into it as well, which is an amazing, radical, radical change from all the prior music theories that existed. And it works. And that's, the, that's how the science of music is. Your proof is your ear. Does it work? Is it harmonious? Okay. All right, so now we have to get into, well, I built a, a chord on C and I got C major, but I built a chord on D and I got D minor. Why is it minor? Why is C major? And we're going to look at that right now. And to do this, we have to understand the concept of whole steps and half steps and the idea of interval naming, which I went through before, so I'm not going to go through again. But um, let me take just a pure C scale for a second, and we could uh, look at it this way. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. D, E, F. I'll take it up to there, probably go a little further, but gone beyond the octave, because when you build harmony, sometimes you have to jump past the octave to do it. All right, so now we have just a generic C scale. Notice the hyphens between the half steps. So this is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now with that, we can gauge an actual formula for a chord. In other words, if I take make a C chord by leapfrogging, one, three, five, C, E, G. Uh, if I note the distance between C and E, that's two whole steps, two W. And then if I note the distance between E and G, well, this is a half step here. E to F is a half step. So this is, if you want to count backwards, here's one whole step and then a half step. So this is one and a half. All right. So you can say then that the major chord formula is two whole plus one and a half. Major. Two whole plus one and a half. All right, now let's look at, I said that D, when we build a chord on D, it becomes minor, but why? It's always this uh, connection between the root and the third that informs you whether something is major or minor. In the case of major, the root to the third will always be two whole steps. In the case of minor, it'll be one and a half. So let's take a look at this D. If I go one, three, five by leapfrogging, I call this one now because it's the root. One, skip, three, skip, five, right? D, F, A. 
And if I notice the distance between D and F, I get one and a half steps, totally the opposite of major. So the root to the third in D minor is one and a half plus, then we look at, uh, well, I'm getting a lot of glare here. Uh, we look at D minor D F A, F to A, as you can see, F to A is whole step, whole step. Now, this is something that can so easily be seen on a piano, and it's so difficult to see on a guitar. Uh, and I've explained why I think I showed you the ten different positions of a one octave G major scale. It's insane. There's so many redundant notes on a guitar that the whole, um, the whole thing becomes uh, kind of a mess on the instrument. You can't clearly see. So what you do to compensate on the guitar is you learn the theory and understand it intellectually, and then you use the guitar uh, by forming visual, uh, visual phenomena called shapes or boxes, they like to say. All right. So now we have the major formula, which is two whole, one and a half, and the minor formula, which is one and a half and two whole. Let's, see, let's look at the third chord of the key of C by going E, leapfrog to G, leapfrog to B. So we get this distance is what? One and a half. Yes, you're right. It is one and a half. E to G. Now, G to A is one whole, two whole. Well, one and a half, two whole. E, when you build a chord on the E note in the key of C, it becomes a minor chord. All right? Now, let's go to the next step. Maybe you could tell me, is this major or minor? F to A and then A to C. If you're saying F to A is two whole steps, yes. And that's giving us the hint right away, two whole steps. This must be major. And then we jump from A to C, and we get a whole step, half step, one and a half steps, F, A, C, minor. Okay? I mean major. <laughs> two whole plus one and a half is major. Okay? Now, we go to the G chord, the all-important five step, and we go G, B, D, and we get obviously two whole, 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 then a half and a whole. Two whole, one and a half, G is major, and this is also the chord that you can build the unique dominant seventh chord. You, On the other chords of the key, you cannot build a dominant seventh. You could build what's called a major seventh, but not the very special chord called a dominant seventh. That only happens at the fifth step of a major key. Uh, moving on, we go to A and we leapfrog and leapfrog. A to C is one and a half. C to E is two whole. One and a half, two whole. A is minor in the key of C. Now, finally, let's look at B, D, F. B to D is one and a half. Oh, this must be minor. It's starting with one and a half. But wait a second. D to E is a whole step and E to F is a half step. This is one and a half plus one and a half. This was this has what's called a flattened fifth, okay? Uh, you'll have to take my word on this, but I'm going to count the steps up on the C chord to go from the root to the fifth. Remember, this is the root, this is the third, and this is the fifth. So whole, whole, half, two and a half, three and a half steps. Now take my word on it that if I build any chord on the key of C, in the key of C, to get to the root to the fifth is always three and a half steps. It's always that distance, okay? Now, here's the weird thing. This is the only chord, the B, uh, built on the B that doesn't have three and a half steps from the root to the fifth. Let's count. B to C is half. C to D is whole, that's one and a half. Here's two and a half. And then we add another half and we get three. It's smaller. It's Normally it's three and a half. This is three, okay? That is the difference, and this chord is the black sheep of the family. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate a little later, dramatize to you why. This chord is rootless, and it actually becomes absorbed by the G7 uh, chord that can be built on the fifth step. I'll explain that in a bit. But first, now, what I want to do is lay out the template, a generic template for any key, and how the chords lay out just like they did in the key of C, how they would lay out for another key, done in a generic fashion. All right, so let me write this out and then I'll explain.
All right. Down here, the Roman numerals, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, now, uppercase Roman numeral means major, and if we look at the first step of the key of C, we, the chord we built, C, E, G, was a major chord. If you build any major key, the first chord will always be major. But you notice when we go to the second step, uh, where we built the D minor on the two step, D, F, A, we got a minor chord. So I traditionally like to uh, put a lowercase Roman numeral to designate that the second step of a key, the chord you build there is going to be minor. And then so on and so forth. The third step of any key is going to be minor. The fourth step of any key is going to be major. The fifth step of any key, B, key is going to be major or possibly dominant seventh. They're interchangeable. Uh, when the dominant wants to act as an ang and when the fifth step chord wants to act in an anxious manner, like it's going somewhere, that's when you want to drop the seven on because it adds more tension. Uh, and finally, the sixth step is uh, is minor, and the seventh step. You see that little zero there? That stands for diminished. Remember. We saw that the fifth became smaller on that particular chord, diminished, it's getting smaller. The fifth is flatted. And here's a, um, a principle in harmony that I notice is that when the root to the fifth is the stabilizing factor in a chord, if it's not three and a half steps, if it's say um, four steps or three steps, that chord is going to be anxious. So let me demonstrate that to you sonically for a second. This is my new Anderson uh, guitar, and I just love the hell out of it. Anderson drop top. All right, I'm going to build uh, a C chord, and it's going root third fifth in that order. All right, now, uh, if I were to take the fifth, root third fifth, and I, if I were to flat the fifth, notice it has some tension to it and couldn't sit there really uh, comfortably. It wants to go somewhere. Or, if I take the fifth of the C chord and raise it by a half step, I get what's called an augmented chord. By the way, that first chord was called C major flat five, just a real simple name. If I raise the fifth, this is called C augmented, and augmented means, you know, just like diminish, you flatter the fifth. When you augment, you raise the fifth by a half step. Listen to this chord. Now, it's a great passing chord, like in old songs, they do stuff like this. So that chord acts as a, a little passing chord. Uh, the song Anna by the Beatles. That, that is the augmented chord. I'm raising the fifth, so I'm creating tension that will take me to this next chord A minor in this particular case. Okay, so. Um, that's a principle. The fifth must be three and a half steps from the root or the chord becomes unstable. It's just a natural law of the geometry of music. Okay, now let me pause this for a sec and I'll see what else I'm thinking about here. Okay, so we got to talk about this chord family template more. This is super important, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in parentheses. Now, let me explain that chord and why I'm telling you that it has no um, root of its own. First of all, you have to understand how a G7 chord is built. Where does the number 7 come from? And, let, you know, actually when we see 5-7, people get confused by the numbers if they're beginners. Musicians understand by default 5-7 means a dominant 7th chord, but why the 5 and why the 7? When you see Arabic numerals, like one, two, three, four, the way we write them out normally, Arabic numerals, uh, those refer to the components inside the chord, the very notes that build the chord. The Roman numerals stand for the step of the scale upon which you built the chord, okay? So here I'm building a chord on the fifth step, which is one, two, three, four, five on the G. I'm building a chord, and I have leapfrog, root, third, fifth, and then uh, I'm sorry, root third, fifth, and then I'm going to add the F for the seventh, okay? Now you notice the G major chord, G, B, D, when I add that seven in up there, uh, can't stretch my fingers, when I add that seven up there, 
um, you notice that this this uh, B diminished chord, B, D, F, that part becomes absorbed into the G7. And it literally does become absorbed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a loop on that diminished chord, okay, um, B, D, F. I'm going to create a loop on it and just vamp on it. And what I'm going to do is, since this chord comes from this key of C, I'm going to build, play around on the C scale, and I'm going to show you, even though the root of this chord is supposed to be B, B, D, F, the root will turn out to be G. And that means it's been absorbed by the G7 chord. So here we go. I'm going to build a little funky uh, lick. Sorry. Okay, there it is. Alright, let me do that loop again. It was kind of screwed up. What is going on? Uh, pause this. Alright, sorry. I just had a little problem with my looper. Now, here's the loop on the B diminished chord. Uh, remembering that the chord I'm vamping is B, D, F, all right? And I'm going to prove to you that B is not the root of that chord. Listen to this. Now I'm just going to play a C scale against this. What is this note? It's the G note. So here's B D F. Let me. See. Oh boy. Here's B D F. I'm going to put a G in the bass. That's a G7 chord. The B D F standing alone does not hold a root. Therefore, it's not one of the uh, seven chords of a key. All right. There's only six chords in a key. The seventh chord becomes absorbed by the uh, the seventh step chord gets absorbed by the 5-7 chord, the, the chord built on the 5th step, that is a 7th chord, root 3rd, 5th, 7th. In a sense, BDF is 3-5-7 of a G7 chord. So, um, root accomplishes everything in music. There would be no music theory if there wasn't such thing as root. Alright, so, we looked at, uh, oh, we looked at everything I wanted to look at today. So that's a quick half hour. I think we're good. Uh, if your brain hurts, please tell me and I'll try to uh, give you some uh, version of aspirin in text or a uh, special video that might help you. Uh, next thing I'm going to, I may hit on is the modes for guitar and how to use them for guitar. All right, well, thanks very much for checking this out. Love you guys. You're awesome. And uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe you'll become one of the next Beethovens or even better, the next McCartney Lennon. Okay. Bye-bye.